All right, how's everybody out there doing? We had a little technical difficulty right there just for a second. Um, as soon as we get some viewers here, I want to get some thumbs up on the audio. Uh, we've been having audio problems with our live videos, and I want to make sure that everybody... All right, how you doing? Oh, there's Moreland. Great. You just made my weekend, Moreland. Thanks for showing up. You know we ain't started on your GTO yet. Oh, my God. Now, let me ask you all a question out there. Does everybody love Christmas? Is Christmas a good time for everybody? And do you have fun on Christmas? That's what I want to know. Because let me tell you what. Let me tell you what, okay? This is what my friend Pete's doing on Christmas right here. This is my Christmas present right here. This is it. It's called a 1950 Ford shoebox Ford. And I just happen to be working today, be working tomorrow, be working on Christmas Day. Can everybody hear me out there? How's our microphone working? Do we got good sound? We don't have any sound. Okay. Is it working okay? Good. I've been through about nine microphones on this shit, and I want to make sure everything's all right. Okay. We got a lot of people out there. I'm going to name off. We got Isaac, Bob. Mopar man, how you doing? Uh, a day with Pete. A day with Peaky. All right. Um, what we're going to do, we're going to jump right into it. What I'm doing over here, I want to show you. Uh, we got the 50 Ford. Our buddy Plumber Mitch was out here last week. I don't know if we were live on Facebook with that or we were over here on DIY Auto School, but whatever we were, we were live. And we went ahead and uh, thank God Mitch showed up. He was a very big help. Now, this is his car. He's building this for his dad. Mitch is building this car for his dad. We already know that. And we went ahead and put that back window in. Well, I started welding it over in this area uh, yesterday morning, and I worked on it all day, just welding that corner in. And you can kind of see by looking at it, I didn't get far. I didn't get far at all. It's a big, big freaking job here. All right. Doing this kind of work is big. Hey, how you doing, Australia? Good job, buddy. Uh, everybody have a Merry Christmas. I'm answering everybody that says that right now. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year to everybody. And Mitch is down in Florida, believe it or not. He's down in Florida catching the sun rays, having a good time. He's out there running and jogging and, you know, hitting the beaches while my friend Pete happens to be right here working on his car. So who's having a Merry Christmas, me or Mitch? That's what I want to know. But we can't bitch and complain. My friend Pete uh, is just one of them guys that works. And, you know, I got to pay my bills. Everybody's got bills to pay. And I hope everybody's having a Merry Christmas. I'm going to walk out here in front of the camera because I'm doing some welding here. And when you're welding this type of a job up, it's very extreme. What's happened is there's a lot of metal going on. This is a lot of sheet metal action. And you can see here's a, here's a slice here, and then there's another slice right there. And then you got all this back window that's got to be welded up. And then as I take my fingers, look right here. That's a filler piece. That's a three-inch filler piece right there. That's got to go from one end of the car. we got to weld it up all the way here, and then bam, back down there. So welding that piece up to do that right where it doesn't warp takes a lot of time. All right? Another thing on this car is when you're doing a job like this, when you're working on one of these old school, you know, nut jobs, we'll call it, uh, nut buster maybe, or stick it in our ass job, um, you got to use 18-gauge steel. You can't use 20-gauge, 22-gauge. Uh, you could use 16-gauge, but that's overkill. 18-gauge is the number on this. Hubby showed me a pic of big and ugly. Okay, I didn't catch that, uh, but yeah, that's nice to know. Um, so what we got here is I'm going to go out there and I'm going to show you how I weld this. Now, there's two, set, two situations when you're welding this type of steel when you got a lot of sheet metal action going so it doesn't warp. You got hammer welding, which is where you take your hammer and your dolly, and while the weld is hot, you hammer and dolly the weld, and then that cools it down and stretches it out at the same time so it doesn't warp. And then you got my favorite, of course, which would be 
um, using a wet sponge. And you cool that well down immediately uh, right after you put it on there. I've had very good luck with that, but a lot of people don't like doing that because they think that by uh, using water with your welder, it's going to shock you and kill you and all that, which it's not because you're grounded, the car's grounded, and everybody's grounded. So let me get over there and do a couple welds, and then we'll get back together. Many of the Body Shop girl isn't here today. She's at home, and uh, it's just my friend Pete, me, myself, and I, and you, the viewer, over here at DIY Auto School, killing a little time, and watching Pete do some work here in live action, you might say. Uh, we're going to leave the cussing out, of course. YouTube doesn't like cussing anymore. So, we can't cuss. Yeah, YouTube says, no, no, no. We're going to slap our hand, okay? You're a bad boy if you say, bitch, fuck, ass, motherfucker. You know, that's all I can say. Let's get some work done and see what happens. We got a glove, okay? Looky there. All right, now, I'm going to use one glove. I'm going to keep one hand. Um, I could use two gloves, but the problem is when I'm using my sponge over there, it's going to get my glove wet, and we don't want that. So let me get over here, and I need my welding helmet. There it is up there. And I can't see any comments right now because the phone that I'm using, the iPhone, is actually in the back. And we'll look at some of these welds here, and I'm going to show you the situation. Now, I've already welded a little bit up, and I'm going to show you. Let me go ahead and get the camera a little closer because we're kind of far away. All right. Let me get that camera just a little closer. Okay. See if we can move that in there. Um, we don't have any zoom on this. So this is mini um, iPhone that we're using actually. So let me go ahead and set that up. Just hang on one second here. We're going to. Okay. Is that a better view? Can everybody see this? piece right here. We're going to weld this piece of sheet metal up right here, this filler panel, and I want to show that to you, so let's go ahead. There we go. Okay. All right. Now, if I can squeeze around this camera, I'm going to walk around the other way, and uh, we'll get some welding done. Okay. We're over here. How's everybody doing? Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Um, the streets are pretty lonely outside. There's no traffic. Uh, it was like that yesterday, and that's kind of depressing, but that means everybody else is on break except my friend Pete. But anyway, back to the situation here. Uh, did everybody watch our video over at SWRC, uh, over at my friend Pete's channel, SWRC? Make sure you check that out. Santa Claus hitched a ride from Minnie the Body Shop Girl, went over too. Uh, a house full of kids handed some presents out and made everybody happy, so that was a good situation. Make sure you check that video out. We uploaded that this morning, um, but we want to get some welding done here. Let me get my tools, and what we got, we got a dolly. Now, this is a hand dolly, and then we got a hammer. Now, this is a body hammer, okay? This is not a hammer that you would pull a nail out with or possibly put a nail in with. Don't, don't use this for carpentry. I've had that hammer since I was about 16 years old. It's a beautiful hammer and uh, it's a hammer that uh, I use all the time. Um, I got that dolly over at Sears and Roebuck when I was about 15 and had it ever since. But what we're trying to do here is let's say that I was going to weld this area up right here and I just put a weld right here. While the weld is hot, I want to take my dolly, I want to stick it under the weld, and then while I'm pushing up, you got to push up as hard as you can, okay? And you see how I'm using my hammer? I'm not way back here swinging it like an axe. I'm up here like this, and when I hit that metal, I'm, I'm plenishing it. I'm doing it real fast where you can't see it, but I'm plenishing the metal, see? Okay, I'm pulling it one way or the other. So then, what's going to happen, it's going to keep that metal nice and flat so it doesn't start doing this, because this is a very, very long piece. Now, let's say we go just a little bit too low and we don't like it. Well, now we're going to go in reverse, 
and look at that. And you can see my dolly, you can see my dolly. All right, so I'm not pushing down on it when I'm using the dolly on the top. I'm letting the dolly, I'm letting the dolly bounce because I'm trying to get that back in shape. All right, so that would be called hammer welding. And that's the weld that you would do on this. But in this situation, we got a long, long weld to do. And my favorite trick is to use a wet sponge. And I'm going to show you what we're going to do here. First thing, you need a nice bright flashlight so you can see with your helmet. And we've already got a couple welds, so we're going to come over here and weld a section up right here. Let me get my welder all ready on my helmet. And I'll go ahead and show you a hammer weld too, but I don't like hammer welding because I just like to use the sponge. It's a lot faster. It shocks the metal. It shrinks it all back up and works real quick. So what we're going to do here is we're not going to do a stitch weld. And when I say stitch weld, we're not going to go like start here and just go, ah. you see what I'm saying? We're not going to do that. We're going to do a continuous spot weld. And what that means is we're going to overlap our spot welds as we weld. So let's go ahead and get a couple going here. This ain't going to take long. We're going to do about an inch and a half right here. And then we're going to take the sponge and I'm going to show you what's going to happen. Alright, we just welded that up. While it's still hot, we're going to take our sponge, and I got water in this sponge, and we're going to cool it down. And I don't know if you can see that in the camera, but when I was welding it, it actually raised up a little bit. When I heated it up with a sponge, it now shrunk itself down and went back to normal. Now, that's the way that I prefer to do this. Um, I get less warpage out of it and it just works out really really good um, there's a lot of people out there that do things different um, I did watch a channel I'll go ahead and I think it's called C Dell that's C E D D E L L and he was putting on a quarter panel on a 67 GTO and he butt welds all his this is butt welded this is not a flange weld just to let everybody know and I'll say this, when he got done with it, that was one of the most impressive welds that I've seen. Um, he did an awesome job on that 67 Chevelle. So check his channel out, C. Dell, C-E-D-E-L-L. -L. He's restoring a 67 GTO, I believe. And give him some support. I also want to uh, do a shout out for a couple teachers. Um, I believe they're special ed teachers out in California. Uh, we got Eddie and Andy that watches my videos vigorously out there and I was supposed to do a live stream video about a month and a half ago and my camera messed up and they probably think I forgot about them I didn't forget about them but uh, we want to wish them a Merry Christmas and all their uh, kids out there their uh, uh, educational teaching kids at school type situation they're probably out of school having fun right now why my friend Pete's over here working um, you know, that's the situation we have, though. I got to work. So, but as you can see, when you wet it down, it's nice and cooled down and everything's right. And it just stays nice and flush and you don't have to worry about anything warping. So now we're going to go up here in this area and I'm going to do a hammer weld on that one. And I'm going to show you how that works. So you got to make sure that you got your hammer and your dolly cords handy. And don't let that slide off and hit you in the head as you're welding. But we're going to go ahead and do a weld right here. And then while that's hot, what you want to do is take your dolly, and all you want to do is hit the weld only.
as you can see, I'm using my dolly as a hammer. Okay. And there you go. All right. Now, my personal preference, once again, is using the water technique. Because you don't have to do all this hammering and all this bullshit. I'm sorry I cussed. I cussed and I shouldn't have said bullshit. But that's life. So you can still go over it with the water if you want to. Just, you know, for safety purposes in case your hand actually rubs across it. But that is the two techniques that I use. And I'm kind of looking right here and I see a little bit of a low spot. So I'm going to take my dolly hammer just like this. And now I'm going to use my uh, pick end, okay, and I'm just going to lightly tap up on it. And I think it's gone. But you can tell just by the action that's going on here, this is a very, very big time consuming job. Uh, if I wasn't talking to you, I would probably only have maybe three more welds done. So don't worry, you're not taking my time up. But, uh, you know, the reason it's time consuming is because you got to make sure that the heat is dissipated and you don't warp the metal. All right. We had a little problem over here in the corner. But it's a fixable problem because everything in life is fixable, okay? Um, I have a lot of people ask me about doing certain jobs in life. Let me tell you something. And you might be this guy, all right? I don't care what the job is. I don't care if you've ever done it in your life before or you've never done it. It might be something that you always wanted to do and you were too afraid. Let me tell you what. The only way you're going to get it done, you got to jump in there. you got to get the tools that it takes and do the job. If I mess this piece of metal up and it's so warped that I can't use it, guess what? I get my cutting wheels out. I get my grinders. I take the piece out of the car and I put a new one in it. It's just that simple. All right. Everything's fixable. Everything's replaceable and everything can be done. Then it's all up right here to help you get it done right. Kind of like this crap going on right here. See? Now, we could leave all the warpage in there, and we can just, you know, wing it and get ourselves about six gallons of Bondo and Bondo this baby up and send it down the road, but I don't fucking do shit like that. I don't do that kind of stuff. I don't play those games. This isn't Earl Shives, but on the other hand, this isn't Boyd Coddington's or Chip Foose's shop either, so, you know, it's all in the situation of how bad you want to do it. Now... Another thing that we're going to talk about here is this is a butt weld seam, okay? Remember I told you it's not a, a flange. I didn't make a flange. So as you're going along here welding this, you got to make sure that all that metal is nice and flat. I see a spot right here that's kind of up in the air a little bit. So we're going to take our hammer and dolly. We're going to get that metal back down. We're going to make sure it's all flush before we go welding it. And then once I get this side all completely done, all the way around, then we'll come back and we'll do this here section right here and we'll, we'll weld this up. All right? And we'll go all the way around it. And the last thing that I'm going to do on this top is I'm going to weld the package tray in and I'll cut this metal off up here and I'll weld the top of that roof, in, uh, the top of the roof into the bat glass. That'll be the ending story right here. What makes it a real bitch up here is underneath right here we got a brace so we can't really do any hammer and dolling on that okay because where this is welded to there's a brace under here so we're going to have to use our sponge on this action right here but the real situation is is i'm self-taught okay i didn't have youtube to watch videos um i didn't have iphones in my back pocket i didn't have you know this that and the other and the best teacher that you can ever have is definitely not me. The best teacher you can have is yourself. To get out there, once again, I'm going to say it, and just do the job. Just do it. There's an actor, his name's uh, Sh uh, Shia LeBeau. 
and he's got a video on YouTube, and he's on stage, and he's hollering and screaming, and he's saying, just do it, just do it. And he looks like a clown act when he's saying that, but what he's telling you is, if you want to do something, do it. That's what he's saying. He said, quit dicking around, quit stroking your ass, quit, you know, talking about it, just get out there and do it. Kind of like me moving to Moab, Utah. Sooner or later, I'm going to be there because I want to do that. But uh, let's go ahead and uh, take a good look at uh, what's been going on. Um, I don't know how far we can go in the shop without the uh, phone disconnecting uh, our Wi-Fi. And uh, then I got to get back to work here, guys, because it's been a long weekend already, and it's only Saturday. And I want to get at least this panel welding in before I go home tonight. This is going to take, to weld this one panel in right here is probably going to take about four hours. That's four hours of welding right here. That's what you're looking at. Yeah, so there you go. I hear somebody saying football's ready to start. You know, uh, I'm sorry my friend Pete's taking up your football time. Um, don't talk football with me, the body shop girl, because let me tell you, she hates football. She definitely hates football. And if you start talking football with her, you might get in an argument. But uh, that's between you and Minnie, not me. Anyway, let me get this camera off of here. Okay, here we go. All right. So, what we're looking at is the 1954. This is a big job. This is like the number one job priority right now, believe it or not. Um, we got to get this thing done. This has kind of been a holdup in my shop, and we just got to get it done. But we've, we've seen this before. Let's go down the road. I want to show you a little tech tip here. Um, has anybody ever put any of these floorings in before? Let me get this out of here. I want to show you this. Here's a good tech tip for everybody. Okay, has anybody ever put any of this flooring in their house? Anybody? Nothing? Nobody? Maybe? Does anybody know what this is? This is laminate vinyl wood flooring. All right, it's the waterproof stuff. Okay, we got a couple guys. All right, so what we got here, this is a jig that I made. And... Anybody, has anybody ever seen a jig like this before? This is something I figured it'd be a real simple, easy way to cut these things because let me tell you, when you're using a knife to cut these and a T-square or whatever, you got your hand in the way and your thumbs. And believe it or not, I saw somebody cut their fucking thumb in half with a utility knife when they were trimming a piece of floor molding in a house. It was one of the grossest things I ever seen. But uh, this jig is real simple and easy. Let me show you how it works. So we got our pencil here, and we just got done marking our wood. And we need to take off this much right here. And I think you all see what's going on. We're going to slide it up in our jig just like that. And then we're going to line it up with our nice aluminum edge. Let me see where we're at here. There it is right there. And then, bam, we're going to slice that baby off, give it a couple knife slices, and down the road we go. So that's a good little jig. Many of the body shops girls, she's going to be the cutter. And I'm going to, yeah, chop saws are great, but the problem you have is dust flies everywhere, and you got to do all that outside, and then you walk back in. Um, this stuff here cuts really, really easy. You just slice it three or four times, and then it snaps in half. But uh, that's just a little tech tip right there. If anybody out there is uh, going to do their own floor, that's a jig that you might want to make to uh, compensate to get nice square straight cuts. So, yeah. Okay. Here's our Camaro. If Otto's watching, uh, we got his car on hold for a few weeks. Got other stuff we got to work on. And uh, we got Moreland out here. Uh, he was the first one to comment. His GTO's out in the back. We'll be getting on that later. But, you know, Christmas time's here, and everybody's out there having fun and 
relating to the situation. And we got Santa Claus up here watching us. So this is where we're going to say goodbye. We hope you've enjoyed the show. And go watch your football. Make sure you clap your hands when they go down on their knees. That's a big thing now. You know, big stars, football stars that they are, got to go down on their knee to show everybody that they're somebody and we're nobody. But, uh, all right, we got to go. Santa Claus says ho, ho, ho. Make sure you go over to the YouTube channel, SWRNC, and watch my friend Pete and Minnie, the Body Shop Girls, um, Christmas video this year. It's funnier than hell. Did somebody just pull in? Who's over here? Oh, ho, ho. What's oh, up, ho. bud? It's a bearded old fart. Well, we got our buddy Mike. What's going on, Mike? We're on YouTube Live here. How I'm you doing, I'm just going bud? for a convertible ride. What man. are you doing, bud? What's going on? Let's see what we got. Are you in your car today? You riding around? Yeah. yeah. Thought you'd stop over here and see my, you knew my friend Pete was working, huh? I thought he can't be working yeah. today, but sure enough How's he the pay supply <laughs> business going, dude? Terrible. We ain't seen you in a long time, Mike. I know. You didn't come out over and, you know, break us in on some news, dude. Let there us know go. what's going on in the big world. How's the Redneck <laughs> Body Shops doing out there? They're doing good. They enjoyed your video. Did they watch the videos, they the two did. brothers? They did. Good, dude. Yeah, they enjoyed it. All right, well, let me say goodbye to these guys, and then we'll be with you in a second. All Beautiful right. car. What do you got here, bud? Tell us what you got. Uh, just an SSR. An SSR convertible, or? They were all okay, but you said you were on a convertible ride and you got the top up, dude. Well, I'm going to put it down. You're going to put it down now? It's getting a little warmer out? It's just right. All right. Now, does this got the uh, V8 fuel injection job in it? Oh, yeah. All right. Awesome. Can you turn the radio off, please, Mike? There you go, buddy. Okay. So it's... there's not many of these things left, huh? Not many. Huh. Not many. Now, how long have you owned it? Oh, I think about two years now. That's cool. That's yeah. cool. So this is actually kind of a collector's item now, huh? I think so. It's going up in value. Wow. Yeah. I remember when the gas price went up, these things went way down in value because they were gas hogs. What are you getting, about seven miles a gallon? Nah, it's about 12. It's about 12? Yeah. Well, that's cool. Yeah. All right, bud, I got to say goodbye. We'll be back in a minute. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right, so we got Mike, the painter guy here with us. I buy supplies from him. Nice guy that he is. We got to go. Take it easy. My friend Pete, your friend Pete over here at DIY Auto School working on the, uh, let me get my welder turned off here, son of a bitch. Burning electricity, and electricity is fucking high out here. Whoops, I said fuck. Sorry about that. Okay, we got to go. Take it easy. Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, and I'm sure that we're going to have other videos loaded up for you to watch very soon. I got to turn this thing off. I'm going to turn it around now. And we are going to X and say goodbye.